Good morning, dolls, and welcome to Little Gretchen's Workshop. So today we're making little purses out of the smallest binder clips that I could find. I think they're the perfect size for 12 scale miniature dolls. And I'm just using a little scrap piece of fabric using the same technique that I use for the luggage with the binder clip. Now, if you haven't seen the video where I make luggage for a large binder clip, I'll leave a link in the description so you can check that out. But the technique is exactly the same. It's just a little bit more tedious because the binder clip is a lot smaller. Now, I did add a little dab of the three-in-one beacons glue to the inside of the binder clip to catch those little ends and edges of the fabric before I actually tuck them in. Now, dolls, although this glue is forgiving and it will give you opportunity to manipulate it a little bit before it sets, you do want to be pretty deliberate as to where you're laying the glue and where you're making your folds. And dolls, after you get your sides folded up nice and neat, use your tool to push the top of the fabric between the two bars of the binder clip now it's not necessary to add glue because there's tension between the two closures of the binder clip. Now it's time for a little detailing, which is always my favorite part. Now I'm just actually using some of my brass pins that I normally use when I'm making my furniture. And I put a little seed bead on the end of it. It's a little pearl. And to me right there at the top of that bag, it looks like a closure. More than anything, dolls, I want to encourage you to just use what you have. Now, this is another portion of the very same fabric, but it has uh, different variations and colors on this particular piece of fabric. So I figured I'd use a piece that had a little bit more gold and green in it to make another bag. That's the wonderful part about making really small things. You don't need very much fabric to get the job done. <laughs> now, it's the exact same process, tucking it in where the glue is folding in your sides, and then going across the top and pushing the fabric down between the two sides, allowing the tension to hold your pieces of fabric together. And again, if you'd like to use glue, you can, but it's not necessary. Now, if you're using a pointed tool, always be careful and mindful of your fingers because you don't want to injure your hands. And that's a lovely little bag, similar pattern, but a different color. That turned out really cute. Now with this one, I'm detailing it slightly different. I had a small broken piece of chain and I tucked it down in between the two little clamping portion of the binder clip and it held that chain in very nicely. Now I did add a couple dabs of glue to the corners just to make sure everything is secure. I don't want anything raveling or popping out. Now take your time dolls with each part. Just do it step by step. And here I'm using another one of those little pins with a seed bead on the top, using a seed bead that is similar in color as the color of the fabric to indicate that there's a closure at the top of the purse. After you thread the bead on, just gently press the pin all the way in. And again, the tension from the binder clip will hold it in. No need to add glue. Now here I am, I made another little bag. I didn't go through the full process because it's the same. I just use different fabric. But I just want to show you that just changing your details will give the purse a totally different look. Instead of adding one little pin, I added two. And I used a different style chain. I'm really happy I kept those little broken necklaces and bracelets. All those little things that looked like chaos turned out to be just what I needed. Look how lovely that is, dolls. Now, I don't want to go on and on on this topic, but I just had to show you this because I thought it was so cute. So I had this piece of gold ribbon and I just cut a small piece of it. And I just want you to be able to just see that you can make miniatures with absolutely anything. This little scrap piece of gold ribbon is going to make a lovely evening bag. I use the exact same concept to make this bag. But I did something a little different for the closures. I didn't use the pins this time. I used some little brass nails that you normally would use for tiny brass hinges. And I just tucked them in at the top and I think they look perfect on this little gold bag. This one I'm not going to add a chain to. I'm going to let it be more of a clutch bag. So dolls, the possibilities 
are absolutely endless. You're only limited by your imagination. So now that I have all these lovely little bags, there's one more thing I want to show you before I let you go today. I had another binder clip that's a little bit bigger than these are, but it's smaller than the luggage size. And I thought it would be nice to make a doctor's bag since I am making things for the doctor's house. And I had this really, really thin piece of snakeskin that I've had for years and had no idea what I could use it for. I always loved the texture, but I wasn't so sure about the pattern. So I'm putting glue on my binder clip the same way I did for the purses, dolls. And this is what I want you to understand, that it's the same technique, but there's so many different things you can do with it. Now, I did have to be a little bit gentler with the snakeskin because it's thinner and kind of fragile because it's old. So I just had to kind of tuck it in and just be very deliberate where I pressed it so that I wouldn't tear it. And in efforts not to tear it, I started to use a orange stick, the type you use for doing fingernails, to do some of my tucking. After I got it all tucked in and got my general shape, I realized I really didn't like the snakeskin pattern. I decided I would prefer my doctor's bag to be black. I played with it a minute trying to determine whether I was making the right decision. But after I pulled out my paintbrush and began to add a layer of the black acrylic paint, I knew that I was on the right track. While coating the snake skin with the black paint, I began to think about what I would use for a handle. I had considered shaping something out of clay, but I had a large jump ring that I cut in half and I thought it would be perfect. Now I did coat the black paint with a coat of satin Mod Podge to give it a little shine and to seal in the paint. Now I did look a little white while it was drying, but no worries on that dolls. It's gonna dry absolutely clear. Now that it dried clear, I actually painted the little metal jump ring and glued it on the top with some super glue as the handle. I really like the way that turned out dolls. I really, really, like it in the black color so much more and you can still see the texture of the snake skin but the black looks a lot more subtle and vintage now i did have a little spare piece of the snake skin that i cut off when i trimmed it and i'm just using this to add some little strap closures to give it a little bit of detail now i'm adding one strap right through the middle where the handle is as the closure and just added a little of my beacons glue and after putting the strap through where the handle is, I realized I had another little broken piece of jewelry I wanted to add. Just a gold jump ring doll, something very simple, just to add a little bit more detail and realism to the piece. You can use absolutely anything for detailing. After I threaded the jump ring, I just glued the other end of the little flap down. Now, I really liked the way it was looking at this point, but I still had some leather left over. So I cut a couple little strips and added a couple flaps to the top. I'd already painted it black and coated it with the Mod Podge, just trimming it. And I cut it in half and just lay them across the top of the bag, just to indicate that it had some little tabs or something. I just felt like those little tabs would be the perfect place to add more details. And it really worked out well because it was just enough of the leather to add a tab to each side with only a little bit to spare. Now, dolls, if you've been watching this series from the beginning, you know what time it is now, nail art time. And I shook out a few of those brass or gold studs in an effort to make my rivet or stud applications a little bit neater. I'm using a precision nozzle with some Loctite super glue, and I'm able to make really, really small dots of super glue on my project without it oozing and getting all glunky. So I think that's going to look a lot better going forward in this process. And I added a little bit to each side and one more inside that jump ring again to look like a closure on my doctor's bag. Now, some might think this looks like a old fashioned purse. Either way, a purse or a doctor's bag. I really love the way it turned out. So dolls, this was a really fun project and I really enjoyed sharing this with you and I hope you dig out either some some old leather gloves you don't wear anymore. Maybe you've got some old leather or some old suede or even some faux snakeskin. 
But if you enjoy this video today, dolls, let me know in the comments. Also, like, share, and subscribe. And stay tuned for part six of bags, boxes, and luggage. And I'm looking forward to seeing you on the next episode of Little Gretchen's Workshop. Bye-bye now, dolls.